a very good morning to you all today we are going to talk about recurrent implantation failure that means repeated ivfs happening and we are not getting the result and this uh, module will be divided into three parts the first i will be giving the current definition and uh, of recurrent implantation failure according to current international guidelines the second would be on what tests we should do for these cases. And third would be what treatment we can plan for such situations. So let's deep dive into recurrent implantation failure. Uh, implantation is the most complex process of IVF where the embryo that is formed has to stick into the endometrium and it's a very complex process consisting of billions of cell divisions of the embryo, the maternal side, blood vessels coming from the maternal side, giving it blood and everything cannot be controlled and measured and that is why the IVF success even when we put in the best embryos is not 100% because one cannot control implantation all the time. A few years ago, failure to achieve a clinical pregnancy after transfer of at least four good quality embryos in a minimum of three fresh or frozen cycles in a woman under the age of 40 was considered recurrent implantation. So broadly speaking, about three cycles uh, where we are planning and if there is no result, would be called uh, recurrent implantation failure. But in this, we must make it in mind that failure could be also because of different controllable factors, which could be inappropriate ovarian stimulation, suboptimal laboratory culture conditions, faults in your embryo transfer techniques. These anyway would lead to low pregnancy rates. So, Recurrent implantation failure is only uh, defined when all your processes are in place, yet we are not getting the result. So recently, as 2023, the European guidelines have come up with what we should do to redefine the subpopulation. Is anybody who's not had two or three IVF failures, should we consider them a recurrent implantation failure? So in this, they have described the scenario in which transfer of embryos considered to be viable and has failed to result in a positive pregnancy test sufficiently often in a specific patient to warrant consideration of further investigation and interventions. So many times, you know, whenever IVF does not work, of course, we get anxious. We go into the net. The net has lots of information. Chat GPT has lots of information. And we go, why did our IVF fail? And then you'll get a huge list of things that could probably would have gone wrong along with their subsequent tests. And you're like, you know, why was this not done? Why should we do this, etc., etc.? So you see here sufficiently often, that means have you done your embryo transfer sufficiently enough in a specific patient means in your age group of uh, profile to warrant these tests. So nowadays there is a model uh, which is called the IVF predict model. It's called, uh, there's also another model uh, which came in a journal, uh, which is highly rated journal in uh, reproductive medicine called human reproduction, the Dillon model. In all these cases, they have said that you can predict the, uh, your overall uh, success rate uh, by putting in some key parameters like age, duration of infertility, egg quality, sperm quality, endometrium, previous treatment, and then you get a model that this is going to be your pregnancy rate per attempt, provided all the steps are done correctly. And this is very, very important 
uh, this uh, thing about you being absolutely optimized as far as your age, your uh, stimulation, your lab condition, all those things. Now, uh, say this is the IVF predict model to give an example. Uh, this is a 36 year old. She's been trying for three years. So her chance of live birth per IVF is 23.8. Her chance of pregnancy per IVF is 27.6. In two embryo transfer, it is 47. In three embryo transfers, it's 62. So here you must know that you're not changing anything. Stimul you're taking out the eggs, you're forming the embryos, you're making good embryo, uh, forming the embryos, which may be grade A, grade B, fresh, frozen, blastocyst, whatever is your protocol, you're doing according to the guidelines. And yet it's negative, negative, negative. But by third, it should be at least 10 out of 6 in this 36-year-old, uh, you know, uh, should get pregnant. Like, for example, in our center, we are in three attempts, a 36-year-old with good eggs and good sperms, good endometrium. By good eggs, I mean a good antral follicle count, a reasonable AMH, uh, should have at least a 75 to 80 percent chance of pregnancy so it also depends from unit to unit so say you know this is what it is if in three attempts she's not gotten pregnant then that's when you should start your investigations of uh, and usually many of these investigations are expensive and that's why just doing expensive investigation right from the first will just drain your financial bank and your financial status without increasing the overall outcome. So here, just to keep it in a different way, less than 35, you need to look at three. Up to 39, you need to look at four embryo transfers. More than 46. However, as you know, Nowadays, you can check whether the embryo is euploid or aneuploid. And euploid embryos have a high chance of implantation. This is a different discussion, PGTA. Uh, I've discussed it earlier, the pros and cons. I'll put it in the comments as to where you should go to understand more about the genetic testing. Uh, the name of that video is Difficult Decisions in IVF. However, having said that, in recurrent implantation failure and in advanced age, the PGTA testing is of value. And if you've done PGTA in less than 35, 35 to 40 and more than 40, and you have transferred two good embryos in each one of them, then your chances of success is very high. Uh, but if you haven't, and then you need to go ahead with your investigations. So in a specific patient, specific number of attempts. So the recommend threshold for cumulative predictive chance of implantation to identify a recurrent implantation failure for the purposes of initiating further investigation is 60%. You've not reached 60% despite those attempts. When a couple have not had a successful implantation by a certain number of embryo transfers and cumulative predicted chance of implantation is greater than 60%, then they should be counseled on further investigation and treatment options. So it's not blanket that everybody with three, four or five should be three should go for RIF. It's dependent on number of factors. So I'll stop here for today. And then in my next video, you will hear about what investigations should we do for these women who are, uh, you know, failing again and again, and what can we do to improve their success? Thank you.